Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art behind Redstone. I'm your host, Om Ledu, and in this our 13th episode of Let's Learn Redstone, we're going to take a look at transparent blocks versus solid blocks. We're also going to go over redirecting dust using pistons and targets. These mechanics are super simple and crazy helpful, not only for just getting the dust to where you want it to go, but also for compacting the redstone. We use them all the time in item sorters and in all sorts of other things. Anytime that we want dust to go up or down in a compact area, or anytime that we want to avoid activating certain components inside of a machine. To the viewers who requested this video, thank you so much for leaving comments. I really hope that y'all enjoy. Starting off, all of the blocks you see here are transparent blocks. Basically, there are two types of blocks, solid and transparent. One of the main differences is that solid blocks will pinch the redstone. The dust is trying to climb up the side of a block, but a solid block will essentially cut the wire, whereas a transparent block is basically air. It's not interacting with the dust at all. This allows us to do several things, but the most common of which is running redstone up and down by folding it back upon itself. Since the dust is not being pinched or interrupted, you can run it just back and forth going up or down. Whereas if we try to do this with solid blocks, we can see that the redstone will become pinched. The solid block is obstructing the line of dust. And in bedrock only, glass is a full block, so you can send a redstone signal going down the glass, from top to bottom. But this only works in bedrock because we have nice things. But in Java, this does not work because glass is technically a slab. And slabs are not full blocks. So in bedrock and in Java, you cannot send a redstone signal down a slab, but you can send it up a slab. Think of it like a one-way. Dust can go up, but it cannot go down. Pistons are also transparent blocks, so they will not pinch the redstone dust. However, in Java, it doesn't matter because you can't place dust on top of them anyway. In Java, the dust will break whenever you activate the piston, and we'll talk about why later on in the video. Another benefit to transparent blocks is that they cannot receive a redstone signal. Even if you have activated dust on top of the transparent block, it will not activate adjacent components the same as a solid block would. You know, if you power dust on top of a solid block, it will then power adjacent components because that block is being weakly powered. But transparent blocks cannot do that. This allows us to run dust in close quarters without actually activating components that we don't want to activate. So like this RS latch, if we wanted to run the output up on top of this piston, but we don't want the piston to activate because it would turn itself off, we can simply use a transparent block so that that piston does not activate. Whereas if we used solid blocks, that piston would activate because those solid blocks would be receiving power. So if you need dust to be on top of a component, but you don't want that component to activate, you can use a transparent block. Now also, if we had another button connected to this other piston, we could have it with a slab right here so that the dust cannot go down the slab. This would prevent it from activating itself, but would still allow us to press this button to activate the piston. However, with a slab, the dust can go up it, so this button would also activate the output. So maybe we want that, or maybe we want to pinch the dust so that this button will no longer activate the dust that is on top of the slab. So again, the transparent blocks can allow you to run dust without activating components, slabs can create a one-way, and then solid blocks can be used to pinch the redstone to prevent it from connecting in places that you don't want it to be connected. You know, whereas a transparent block would not pinch that redstone, so all of that dust would be connected. Glass is essentially air that you can place redstone dust on top of. And while we're on the subject of running dust, targets and pistons will redirect the redstone. They will force adjacent redstone to point into the target or piston. Now, a piston is a transparent block. However, a target block is a solid block, which means that since the dust is pointed into the target, the target becomes weakly powered when the dust is active. Because solid blocks can be weakly powered, whereas transparent blocks, like a piston, cannot be. Now, there is one visual bug when it comes to target blocks, is that they look like they're transparent blocks. They don't actually visually pinch the redstone. And I'm pretty sure this was because when targets first came out, they were considered transparent blocks. 
And so they don't look correct, but they are pinching the redstone. They are, in fact, solid blocks. So the biggest benefit of targets is to redirect the redstone in tight spaces to make things more compact. And targets work the same in both Bedrock and Java, but again, pistons are different. For one, pistons in Java do not attract the redstone. They do not redirect dust. And then also, in Java, you cannot place torches or dust on top of pistons. But in Bedrock, even though a piston is a transparent block, you can still toggle torches. Not only that, but you can actually power the piston from one of the adjacent blocks, and when that piston is powered, it will toggle the torches. This is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the best unique things to Bedrock, is that you can activate torches from basically two blocks away. Just by powering a block that is next to a piston, if that torch is on the piston, it will then toggle. That is just mind-blowing. This also allows us to make these teeny tiny item sorters. This is bedrock only, of course, because you cannot place torches on the sides of pistons. This is such a unique and special mechanic. Being able to toggle torches from over two blocks away is just mind-blowing. Now, the reason why this doesn't work in Java is because a piston is technically a door. That's the same reason why Quasi works, is because a piston is technically two blocks tall, because it's a door. It's just an invisible two block tall door that's only one block tall. That's also why you can't place stuff on pistons in Java, because technically the piston opens whenever it's powered, because it's a door. But in Bedrock, we can place stuff on the sides of pistons. So the way this item sorter works is we have glass so that the pistons don't activate from the topmost dust. So whenever the item sorter cell reaches a signal of two, it will then activate the pistons and then toggle the torch between on and off, which will allow some items to pass through. Now we also want to have obsidian at the end of these pistons so that they don't move, because if the pistons move, of course the torches will get knocked off because the torches don't move along with the pistons. This next sorter is overflow protected and is also a bedrock only design, because in Java, redstone dust cannot travel down glass. This allows us on bedrock to avoid using repeaters for our item sorters, because repeaters slow down item sorters dramatically. So as always, we have comparators looking at the filter hoppers. Then the glass allows the redstone dust to go down and wrap underneath it without pinching it. Then we have target blocks to redirect the redstone, which allows it to be tileable. But in Java, this is basically the only item sorter that you can build, and it uses repeaters, so it's more expensive and super slow. So just never build this in Bedrock. We have better alternatives. But now let's look at some examples. So let's say you want to toggle this torch with this lever. Now, since you need dust behind that torch, you know, it's going to be kind of maybe difficult to get the power there. If we try to just use solid blocks, that top block is going to pinch the redstone. So if we switch it out with a glass, since the redstone can travel down glass in bedrock and will not pinch the redstone, that lever will now toggle that torch. Now you could always use a repeater right here that would work the exact same way and not require the topmost glass. However, what if there's a component back here that you don't want to activate. You know, like we don't want to activate that lamp, so we would need glass right there or a transparent block. And since transparent blocks can't receive weak power, the repeater wouldn't be able to pull power out of that block. So in this example, we couldn't use a repeater because we need that transparent block to avoid activating the lamp. So in this case, we can just add another glass and now the lever will be able to toggle the torch without activating the lamp. Or when it comes to sending power straight up or straight down, of course, you can use solid blocks and redstone torches to send power straight up, but you can't use this same method to send power straight down. So if we want to send power down in a compact area, on bedrock, you can just make like a zigzag of glass and just place dust on top of it. Now again, this does not work on Java because glass is not a full block. It is technically a slab. But on bedrock, it is as easy and cheap as that. Or if you need to activate a vertical pillar of something, such as droppers, you could just use a zigzag of glass with dust on top. For another example, let's say that you have a line of dust that is being redirected by target blocks in order to power some lamps. But you want to have dust that is next to this other dust, but it connects, and you don't want that. You don't want the top lever to activate the bottom lamps. You want them to each have their own separate lever. But we can use solid blocks to cut the redstone lines, to pinch them, so that they are no longer connected. And now each lever would function independently, toggling their own sets of lights 
even though the dust is basically right next to each other. Or let's say that you have a line of slabs on the top line. Well now, even though the dust is connected, if you activate the top lever, only the top lights will turn on, since the dust cannot travel down slabs. But if you activate the bottom lever, it will activate both sets of lights. Since dust can travel up slabs but not down them, remember that slabs act as like a one-way inhibitor. For something as simple as transparent versus solid blocks, there are just so many applications. From preventing certain components from activating, such as those bottom pistons, to redirecting the redstone in compact areas, like by activating the piston from the front using a repeater which will toggle the torch above the repeater, or toggling the piston from the back, redirecting the dust allowing it to be tileable, and still allowing that torch to be toggled. Whereas without the pistons, the dust wouldn't redirect, so toggling those torches would be impossible from this position. And really, where these mechanics shine the most is in bedrock item sorters. Every time we build an item sorter in bedrock, we abuse these mechanics. When it comes to custom redstone, there are always alternative ways to work around these problems. You know, you can just run the dust farther away if you don't want it to activate a component or something. You know, but in item sorters, they need to be very precise, have a specific number of dust, and things like that. So it's so amazing that in Bedrock we can use glass and we can use pistons and target blocks in order to avoid using repeaters in our item sorters. This gives us more variety and makes the item sorters even faster. But that's all we got for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And be sure to leave a comment. Even if it's just to say hi, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with me. Always remember that you are totally awesome, and above all, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.